All right, so the first topic today is morphisms of affine schemes. Um, so we're going to do morphisms of the schemes. So we'll start with the affine case. Now, uh, if you remember back when we defined morphisms of varieties, uh, we used uh, we made a special assumption that uh, that we were dealing with sheaves of k-valued functions. Um, but uh, in the case, and that worked fine for varieties. In the case of uh, schemes, that's not true, right? The the structure sheaf. Uh, the, fun the things there, if you want to interpret them as functions, they have values in different fields at different points. So, um, so that doesn't quite work. Uh, we mentioned at that time that uh, what you needed to do in the general case is that we need to specify the pullback uh, as extra data part of the, as part of the morphism. Uh, so that's what we're going to have to do for our schemes. Um, now, there's going to be, need to be some uh, compatibility conditions. So you can't just do uh, arbitrary. Uh, functions for the pullbacks. Um, okay, and so let's uh, let's we need to recall some facts about uh, morphisms of, of varieties uh, for a moment, and that will uh, give us some motivation for the compatibility conditions that we'll be using. All right, so if we have a V, an open subset of U, which is an open subset of Y, uh, we, the pullbacks work like this, right? If you take a O. Uh, O y of u, and you restrict it to there should be a restriction map to uh, O y of v. So this is just restriction, and uh, then there's the pullback map where you you pull a function on y back to a function on f just by composition. Okay, and there's also a pullback here. All right, and uh, and of course. Uh, f inverse of v is an open subset of f inverse of u, so there should be a restriction map here. And, and since uh, this is, uh, these maps are just given by function composition, it's clear in the case of uh, varieties that this map commutes. So that's going to be uh, one of our conditions. But there's uh, one more observation I want to make about this. So uh, this uh, uh, shows that there is a well-defined map. Uh, we'll call it f pullback a from uh, the local ring of y at a uh, to the local ring of x at f of a. All right, so remember an element of the local ring is just uh, an open subset uh, together with a section over that open subset. And uh, and then what, I mean, so you just map, you just map a phi u to uh, to the pullback uh, v of f on f inverse of u, right? And the point is, uh, this 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 condition up here uh, tells me that uh, this map is well defined. If you picked a different representative um, that and you agreed on a smaller open subset, then uh, then it would map to the same class over here. Remember, uh, uh, this equivalence class is uh, if there's a the two things are equivalent, if there's a possibly smaller open subset uh, on which uh, they agree after restriction. I want to look now at uh, how the maximal ideals of these local rings uh, behave under this pullback. So let's remember a maximal ideal um, in a y at a, uh, what was it? Well, it's just the functions. Uh, in uh, in, a, in the local ring uh, such that uh, uh, phi of a are equal to zero. So the functions that vanish at a, right? All right, so now let's, let's think about what is a, uh, if you take this uh, this map, f upper star a, and you take the inverse image of this maximal ideal, uh, we'll get some ideal in uh, ox f of a, and what is it exactly? It's the, the functions in uh, O, Y, F of A, uh, such that if you pull them back, uh, you land in I of A. That's, that's just the definition uh, of the inverse image. But, uh, but, but what does this mean? Uh, this just means that uh, 
the pullback when you evaluate it at a it equals zero. That's that's uh, this definition we give up here. Um, but uh, that the pullback is just the composition, right? So this is just a phi of f. I'll write it like this: phi of f uh, of a uh, equals zero. Okay, but if you look at this, this is just exactly uh, the definition of uh, the ideal of f of a. All right, so uh, that's the, the fact that I want to highlight is that the inversion image of the ideal of a is exactly uh, the ideal of f of a. So in other words, we can say, um, uh, I mean, this is not, the, geometrically this makes sense, right? Functions uh, that vanish at a uh, pull back to uh, functions that uh, vanish at uh, f of a. Uh, that's, that's sort of what it's saying uh, geometrically, and, and, and that should uh, make sense. OK, and that, that's going to be one of the conditions we use for schemes. All right. Uh, so in order for for a condition like this to make sense, we need to make sure that uh, all the stocks are local rings. So here's the definition of a local E ring space. Okay. Uh, so this is a uh, is a ring space. So remember, ring space is just a, a topological space with a sheaf of rings. Um, but a locally uh, ring space satisfies an additional condition that, a, that uh, each stock uh, OXP uh, is a local ring. OK, so, uh, so examples that we have so far are um, uh, pre-varieties. Uh, we know that those are our locally ring spaces uh, and also uh, affine schemes. So we defined the structure sheaf, sheaf for affine schemes and I believe we uh, stated a proposition. Um, I can pull it back up here and here we go. So uh, we, we proved that the local ring was uh, heard it, I should say we didn't know that yet the stock of the structure sheaf was in fact the local ring, ring. it was uh, the localization of our IP which is a local ring right okay all right those are the two main examples uh, that we really want right now so now we can define uh, a morphism of local ring spaces Uh, locally ring spaces is uh, so, so we'll have a x and y br2 spaces we'll have a, a continuous map f from x to y and uh, we also need the data of uh, for every uh, U in Y, there's a pullback map, F pullback from uh, O, Y, U, the, structure, the functions, structure sheaf uh, on Y, uh, evaluate at U, uh, mapping to uh, O, X of F inverse U. Okay, and this has to satisfy uh, the compatibility conditions that we mentioned earlier satisfying um, so uh, for all open subsets uh, v inside of u inside of y like this um, we have this diagram uh, that we drew earlier ox f inverse of v uh, this needs to commute. Okay, and the other thing is uh, 
the induced maps uh, have a uh, fullback at P. So just as uh, we mentioned before, if you have this uh, commutativity condition, you will induce uh, maps on the local rings. So this is a map from uh, OYP to OX uh, F of P. Oops, we got that backwards, let's fix that. That should be f of p here and p here. Um, okay, the induced maps must satisfy that uh, f p star inverse of uh, the maximal ideal. So I'm gonna write uh, i p here must be uh, the maximal ideal i f of p uh, in In this local ring. Okay, so so IP here is supposed to be the maximal ideal in the local ring uh, OXP, and IF of P is the maximal ideal in this ring. Uh, and of course, the, these are local rings; they have unique maximal ideal. Uh, that's the hypothesis that the X and Y are locally ring spaces. All right, and this uh, once again is this is kind of a just asserting the sort of geometrically. Uh, obvious fact that functions on um, this is saying that, that the functions uh, on y that vanish at p should pull back to uh, functions uh, sorry the functions on y that vanish at f of p should pull back to functions on x that vanish at p right that's what this is saying let's now state uh, the following proposition which will uh, give us a hint that this was uh, the right definition so uh, for two rings, okay, uh, sorry, I, I guess we didn't make the definition, but the definition, of course, is that um, a morphism of affine schemes is just a morphism of locally ringed spaces, okay? And uh, also we should note that uh, by our remark before, uh, our morphisms of uh, pre-varieties are, um, are morphisms of locally ringed spaces as well, if you consider the pre-variety to be a, a locally ringed space, okay? All right, so here's a proposition for uh, any two rings. R and S. There is a bijection. Uh, between uh, morphisms. From uh, spec R to spec S. And uh, ring homomorphisms going the other way. From S to R. Okay. Um, uh, where the, you, you can write uh, this bijection going one way is easy. From F goes to uh, F pull back. Okay. And uh, in particular, Uh, this implies that we have uh, a bijection between uh, affine schemes uh, modular isomorphisms uh, and uh, rings mod isomorphisms. So if you like category theory, uh, the second part here is really saying there's an equivalence of categories between affine schemes and rings. Um, or maybe you need to take uh, the opposite category once because uh, the morphisms uh, uh, switch directions. We went from R to S here and S to R here. So if, uh, if you just make that change, then there's an equivalence of categories here. All right. Well. We'll not maybe write down every detail of this proof, but let's uh, hit the important points. So um, let's say we started with a, a morphism from a, a spec R to spec S. Well, then there, there's a pullback map, right, from a O spec R, spec R, uh, sorry.
on the whole space, right? Okay, but but the we've def remember we define the structure sheaf exactly so that it's a uh, uh, global sections are uh, are exactly uh, the ring, right? All right. So so that that that's what the, this this error was supposed to mean. All right. Uh, now uh, let, let's let's go the other way. Let's uh, let's assume uh, that we have a, a morphism f phi from s to r. Uh, then we can define a map of topological spaces uh, f from spec r to spec s uh, just by taking a prime ideal. So p is a prime ideal in r, and we'll map it to uh, phi inverse of p. Okay, and if you remember from commutative algebra, uh, the inverse uh, image under a ring homomorphism of a prime ideal will again be a prime ideal. Um, so uh, this makes sense. All right, and to define the map on, on structure sheets, let's look at a OY of U. What are sections here? So remember uh, our definition of a structure sheet. These are elements, let's say, a psi P for all points P in U, where, where psi P are elements of OYP. And uh, of course, these have to satisfy some compatibility condition that have to uh, be given by locally by uh, quotients of regular functions, but let's not worry about that right now. Let's just talk about with the map. So this is supposed to map into uh, OX uh, F inverse of U. All right, so oh, what does this map to? Well, it maps to uh, something for every uh, uh, for every Q in uh, F inverse of U, right? But Q in F inverse of U, according to uh, this map here, that just means uh, uh, Q uh, such that um, uh, uh, phi inverse, that's our ring homomorphism, phi, phi inverse of q uh, is in u. All right, so, uh, so now uh, we kind of know what to put here. Uh, we can put phi of, uh, sorry, psi of uh, phi inverse of q. Phi inverse of q is in p, so it's, it's one of uh, these things here. And then we can just uh, apply the map phi to it, and then we'll end up with something in q. Um, there you go. So, yeah. or, or I should say, uh, we wind up with something in the local ring NQ. Okay, so I'll, I'll leave checking all the compatibilities and everything uh, to you if you are interested, uh, but that's how you construct the spy section. Now we're ready to define the affine subskis. Now remember for subvarieties, uh, we just defined a, a subvariety as uh, a closed subset uh, of a variety. Uh, that's uh, not quite good enough for subschemes because uh, remember uh, a, a scheme is not just determined by its set. There's a, there can be extra things going on in the structure sheet. So, so here's the right definition for affine subscheme. So an uh, affine subscheme, so an affine subscheme uh, of uh, spec R uh, is a scheme uh, spec S uh, with a morphism a phi uh, from R to S, or, or, or sorry, rather uh, a morphism from a uh, spec S uh, to spec R uh, such that the corresponding ring map from R to S uh, is surjective. Okay, and uh, you should notice that uh, if uh, this map is surjective, uh, that implies, so, um, so let me call it phi as we were doing before, that the map uh, F, which takes uh, a prime ideal to uh, the inverse of the prime ideal uh, is injective. All right, so you can uh, uh, check that from commutative algebra. Okay, and also should we, we should note that if you have a surjective map from uh, R to S, so this implies that the S is just uh, isomorphic to R uh, mod I for some ideal. I uh, in R. Okay, so so we get this uh, uh, 
projection that uh, affine subschemes. Of spec R. Uh, R in bijection with uh, ideals. In R. So for varieties, affine subschemes uh, corresponded to radical ideals uh, in the coordinate ring. Uh, but now we're allowing ourselves uh, any ideals uh, because we're okay with having uh, no potent elements in the structure sheet. All right, uh, let's talk about intersections for a minute because I think because that will give us an example of, of how how these uh, null potent elements are useful. So, um, if uh, if uh, let, let's say we have two affine subschemes, spec R uh, mod I one and spec R mod I two. So these are both uh, affine sub subschemes of uh, spec R. Um, then we can define their intersection. Is uh, oops, spec R modulo the sum of the two ideals. Okay. Now remember, for varieties, we we said that the intersection of uh, two sub varieties uh, would be defined by the ideal I one plus I two with a radical. So for varieties. Uh, we had to take the radical of the ideal because we just wanted to take this kind of set theoretic, in, um, a set theoretic in, intersection. Uh, in this case, uh, we're just going to not worry about that, and we'll, we'll let the no potent elements be there uh, if they want to. So um, here's the here's the example where, where that uh, might be useful. So uh, example, let's uh, let's take uh, uh, R to be K x1, x2. So that means I'm thinking of a spec R as a, the affine plane, A2. Okay, and uh, we'll take uh, J1 to be x2 mod x1 squared, and we'll have a J1 uh, just be a x2. So uh, the picture you should be thinking of is uh, here's here's A2. And then we have uh, this parabola defined by uh, defined by J1, and then we have uh, uh, the coordinate line um, right here, x2 equals zero. This is uh, right here. So the intersection is just uh, the single point at the origin. Uh, let's uh, look at the ideal. So a J1 plus J2 will be the ideal generated by uh, both of these things. Okay, but if x2 is in the ideal, uh, then um, this is just uh, x1 squared, x2. You don't need to write it right there. <laughs> and uh, and so uh, r mod j1 plus j2 will be this ring. That's supposed to be an x there. Uh, x1 squared x2 so that means we can sort of just uh, forget about uh, uh, the x2 so this will just be like this okay I'll be this ring here uh, and this is uh, this is a scheme with one point but it has this no potent element x1 and, and the idea here is that this intersection here the scheme theoretic intersection remembers something about the multiplicity and the tangency of the intersection. So you should think about this as, uh, as uh, remembering the tangent direction. I mean, as a subscheme, right? Uh, as a subscheme of A2. Right, this map can tell you uh, what would uh, uh, where, where the tangency was. And also, uh, we can check, I mean, we're not going to make this too rigorous yet, but the dimension as a k-vector space of uh, k 
minus 1 over uh, x1 squared is equal to 2. Um, right, it's generated by 1 and x. And, and that corresponds to uh, the fact that a line and a parabola should intersect with multiplicity 2. Okay. All right, let's look at uh, the next proposition. Uh, we're just talking about distinguished open subsets. So, um, so let R be a ring. And uh, F be an element of R. Uh, then the distinguished open subset uh, uh, DF inside of a spec R uh, is isomorphic. Uh, to uh, spec R localized at F. So this is the ring R localized at the element F, and um, and we're saying that's isomorphic to the distinguished open subset uh, DF of spec R. All right, of course, uh, uh, DF, so an open subset of a locally ringed space is again a locally ringed space, so DF is a locally ringed space, and uh, we're claiming here that it's actually uh, isomorphic to uh, this affine scheme here. I think uh, I won't uh, tell you the proof of this one. Uh, it's not too hard, but um, I think uh, the statement is, is completely analogous to uh, what we did with affine varieties, right? We looked at uh, the, the coordinate ring of, uh, or the, the, the space of sections uh, of these uh, open subsets, and, and we got something exactly like this. So um, let's just uh, remember that. That is an important proposition. Now we're finally ready to make our general definition of schemes, and it's exactly what you might have uh, guessed. So, uh, a scheme is a locally ringed space um, with an open cover. Space is isomorphic to uh, affine schemes. Okay, and morphisms of schemes. Are, are morphisms of locally ring spaces. Okay, of course, uh, in practice, when you're doing computations, uh, if you want to uh, compute stuff with morphisms and schemes, you'll be looking at affine covers, and then on the affine cover, the morphism is uh, uh, just given by ring homomorphisms. That's usually how you might think about it. Okay, so let's now let X be the scheme and talk about the various kinds of subschemes. So if you an X is open, uh, then uh, then U is naturally a scheme, right? Um, how would you how would you see that? Well, of course, the U is a locally ringed space, and um, and then uh, you. Remember that the, the distinguished open sets uh, form a basis for the topology, and uh, then we just use uh, use this proposition to see that the uh, open subset is uh, is itself a scheme. Okay, so that, that works just the same way it did with varieties. Uh, now, uh, for a closed subscheme, we have to be a little bit more careful. So, uh, y is a closed uh, is a closed subscheme. of x, well, of course, it has to be a scheme itself, um, but also if it has a morphism. i from uh, y to x, and an open cover. I, of course, I want an, here I want an affine open cover uh, of x. So uh, we'll say uh, UK 
uh, such that um, I uh, restricted to uh, I inverse of UK. So this will be from I inverse UK uh, to UK uh, is uh, affine closed subscheme as above. And, uh, and, and what was that definition again? So the definition there was that uh, then this is I inverse of UK would have to be affine and the corresponding ring homomorphism going in the other direction has to be surjective. That was their definition. Okay, and of course, uh, if you're familiar with uh, with these things, the sort of uh, nice way to say this is that uh, Y should be given by a sheaf of ideals. Um, so we haven't uh, defined those things yet, but I think we uh, will in the next chapter. We'll get to that. Um, just as a, a, a closed subscheme, an affine closed subscheme is defined by a single ideal, while it'll be defined by a sheaf of ideals. So we'll, we'll talk about that uh, later, hopefully. Okay, good. And uh, one remark now that maybe I should have made earlier is that uh, schemes. Uh, just the word scheme by itself um, uh, do it doesn't require it to be separated, uh, usually. Uh, so if you want to have a separated scheme like we had with, uh, with varieties, then you need to say separated scheme. Okay, so that's maybe a little bit uh, different uh, notation than we might have guessed. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is, is talk about how uh, the category of, of schemes is really just uh, enlarging the category of varieties. And so I make that, we've kind of hinted at this already, but let's try and make it a little more precise. So uh, if we have uh, X, a pre variety, uh, we can associate to it uh, X scheme, which uh, will be a, be a scheme. And, uh, and what is it as a set? It's just uh, equal to the, the irreducible uh, closed subsets of X. Okay, and uh, in this, uh, under this uh, correspondence, uh, if we had an affine variety, so if X was affine, uh, this would go to exactly uh, uh, the spectrum of the coordinate ring of X, right? So remember the spectrum uh, has a point for every uh, uh, irreducible, every prime ideal which corresponds to an irreducible closed subset. Okay, and if you glue that together, you get something for uh, uh, pre-varieties and schemes. Okay, now under this correspondence, uh, open subsets, uh, you can check the open subsets of X uh, will correspond exactly to uh, open subsets of X scheme. So it's, it's, it sort of has this uh, same topology in, in that sense, even though it has extra points, but, but the open subsets are in, in bijection. So let me make that have an arrow. Bijection. Okay, of course, uh, preserving inclusions and everything you want. And, and furthermore, uh, if you take the, the structure sheaf on, on these open sets, Uh, the sections will actually be isomorphic. So remember, these are rings here. So this is a, an isomorphism of rings. And, and furthermore, if you have a, a X to Y, where these are our free varieties, over here, uh, the morphisms, so the morphisms from X to Y uh, will be in bijection. Uh, Sorry, no, that's not a bijection. Let me erase that. But uh, a morphism of pre-varieties uh, will give you a morphism of the associated schemes. Right. 
Okay, so uh, basically well, what we're saying is that uh, if you work in the category of schemes, you have, schemes, you have access to, to all the information or all the things that you could do uh, with pre-varieties, uh, plus there's a lot more, there's, there's more uh, spaces, you know, there's, there's more schemes than pre-varieties, and there's also, you know, more maps uh, at the scheme uh, level. Okay, so, um, okay. All right, so one question you, you might ask is if you start with a scheme, uh, can you know whether it comes from a pre-variety or, or a variety? Uh, how could you tell that? So that's the next question we're going to address. So we'll introduce some, some useful language to talk about schemes. So uh, here's, here's a definition. Uh, so uh, let's let Y be a scheme. Then uh, a scheme over Y. Uh, is a scheme X uh, with a morphism to Y. Okay, so uh, that's not so bad. So now uh, let's define a morphism uh, of schemes over Y. Uh, is so let me just try draw as a diagram so let's say we have x1 uh, as a scheme over y and we also have uh, x2 as a scheme over y a morphism uh, of schemes over y is just a morphism from x1 to x2 such that this diagram commutes so i'll just draw the picture maybe uh, not write this and uh, you can think this this makes a, a new category category of schemes over y and of course uh, you know compositions of morphisms and everything works out fine all right, and it's also common to say, you know, if uh, if y is affine, uh, we could also say uh, x is a scheme uh, over over s, where s is just a ring. So instead of uh, saying uh, a scheme over spec s, we'll just say a scheme over s. All right, now we're going to introduce uh, a finite in this condition. So we say uh, X is, is finite type over Y if there is an affine open cover uh, cover uh, VI of y uh, and let's go ahead and, and say vi is equal to uh, spec of si because um, i'm going to want a name for that ring um, so that uh, for each i uh, f inverse of vi so this will be this will be a subset of x uh, has a finite open cover uh, a finite affine cover uh, uij so uh, the i matches up here and the j is, is a new index and let's uh, say this is a spec uh, rij um, so that um, Rij uh, is a finitely generated uh, SI algebra. Okay, so just just to remember how that works. So we, by construction, a uh, Uij, the open subset in X, uh, maps into uh, Vi, right, and uh, but 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 this is equal to to spec si and this is equal to spec rij. So if we have a map from spec rij to spec si, uh, that's the same thing as a map of rings from si to rij. Okay, so this map makes rij into an si algebra, and the condition is that we want rij to be finitely generated. 
Okay, the sort of simplest case of this, and also perhaps, and maybe maybe the most important case, at least for our purposes right now, is uh, if if S is just itself affine at the spectrum of K a field, right? Uh, then uh, X uh, is a finite type. Over S, uh, if if what, uh, if it has a finite if it has a finite affine, co affine cover. Uh, by uh, uh, spec R J for R J is a finitely generated. Uh, K algebra. All right, so so in this case, there's not there's not any interesting open covers of S to pick because S is only a single point. All right, spec of a field has only the maximal ideal, so that's a single point. Um, so so you have to pick that to be the affine cover of S. So that means X has to have a, a finite affine affine cover um, by uh, by finitely generated K algebras. Okay, uh, and, then, and then part C will be a, a scheme is reduced um, if the, the rings of sections uh, have no, no potent elements. Okay, and you can check, I think it's uh, one of the exercises, that this is equivalent to saying uh, OX of uh, A uh, has no nil potents. For all A. Okay, this is, this is of course for all U. Okay, and now we have what we need to identify uh, a pre variety. So, uh, pre varieties uh, with ground field K are precisely, or correspond precisely, maybe, with uh, reduced. Schemes of finite type over K. Okay, so how does this work exactly? Well, let's see. Uh, a scheme over K was a scheme over spec K. If K is a field, then uh, that's just a uh, means that the scheme comes with a map to a point. So that doesn't really contain any information. But what we do have is if it's finite type over K, that means uh, by what we uh, we said right up here, that uh, the scheme has to have a, a finite affine cover by spec RJ, where RJ was a finitely generated K algebra. Well, a, fi a spec RJ of a finitely generated K algebra, that exactly sort of corresponds to an affine scheme, right? A finitely generated K algebra can be written as, as Kx1 through Xn uh, modulo some ideal. Okay, oh, okay, well, this is almost uh, because this, uh, schemes can have reduced elements or non or non nil potent elements, uh, but, but this hypothesis is reduced. Make sure these actually uh, correspond to the affine schemes the way you want. So uh, reduced gives you the no nil potents, the finite type over K gives you a uh, open cover by affine uh, uh, affine varieties. Okay, so uh, that that's the right way to think about that. Okay, so in, in order to uh, talk about separatedness and also for for other useful things, we need to talk about products of schemes. Now, uh, it makes more sense to talk about products of schemes uh, over y uh, using the definition that we had before. So uh, 
So let, let's give this definition. So we're going to have a universal property. So if I have a, a x1 over y and I have a x2 over y, uh, then the product uh, x1 cross x2 should assess should come with maps to x1 and x2 and should satisfy the universal property that if you have a, a z from x or z to x2 a map from z to x2 and a map uh, from z to x1 such that uh, this diagram commutes meaning that they agree when you go all the way down to y then there should be a unique map from z to the product okay so i'm not going to uh, write all that down in words but here here's the uh, the relevant picture and this is called uh, a fiber product or, or sometimes a Cartesian square or or sometimes it's uh, like a base change diagram All right, well, the reason it's called the fiber product is if you, if you think through the definition, if you look at uh, uh, the fibers uh, of y, the uh, fibers over y uh, uh, in, in this map here, so if, so if I, have a, I have a point here and, and a fiber here, if you uh, take a, an inverse image at this point, at the same point here, and then look at the fiber here, it should be basically the same fiber in X1 cross X2. It should be isomorphic to the fiber over here. So that's why it's called a, a fiber product. And you can call it a base change diagram too. If you have a scheme X1, uh, X1 is a scheme over Y, uh, but now you want to change your category to schemes over X2, you can do that with a map from X2 to Y uh, using using this here. All right, so, so th there's uh, some ways to think about this. Uh, for the construction, you know, if, if xi is the spectrum of uh, ri, and uh, if and let's have y also be affine, uh, then then the product uh, x1 times x2, uh, you can construct as the spectrum of, of ri uh, tensor, or let's say r1 tensor r2 over s. So remember r1 and r2 are s algebras that follows from the fact that there's a map from from map from xi to y corresponds to a map from r uh, to s from s to ri. Um, all right so so this uh, tensor product here makes sense and for general schemes you can kind of uh, uh, glue these together uh, to get what you want. Okay and really I should be writing um cross over y, right, because it, it, it does depend on what scheme you're over, uh, what the product is. Um, and notice that if you have just two completely arbitrary rings, it doesn't really make sense to just take the tensor product of two rings. They have to both be, you know, algebras over the same, uh, over the same thing. So, um, so that's why we need to do products of schemes over y and not just products of schemes generally. All right, so uh, uh, here's some definitions that make use of this product. So uh, let's say we have two closed subschemes. Uh, closed subschemes. Then their scheme theoretic intersection. Uh, theoretic intersection. is just um, considering these as schemes over x, you take the, the product over x. Okay, notice of course the, the, the product over x has, has a map to x, so you can consider it as a, uh, as a subset of x. And uh, one thing we should note uh, for affine schemes, So, so in this case, so let's let's say that um, that x i is equal to a spec of R mod uh, i sub i, uh, where x is equal to spec R. 
All right, so remember, closed subschemes of an affine scheme just corresponds to uh, quotient rings like this. Uh, then uh, if, if you do the construction that I, I said in the last thing, so you have our, attempt, you, you do this, right? Uh, but you can check that uh, this is actually this is the same as um, r mod i1 uh, plus i2. Uh, so this so this agrees with our previous definition. All right. So I think earlier we we said that the the intersection of two affine subschemes. Uh, uh, should be just uh, the spectrum of, of this ring here, and so that agrees with uh, with this fiber product definition as well. All right, so that, that's definition A. Uh, let's go on to definition B. This one you can probably I guess once I start writing it. So a scheme x over y is uh, separated. Okay, but it has to be separated uh, over y. The separated condition is going to be uh, relative uh, to y. Uh, if the diagonal um, x mapping into x cross x over y uh, is closed. So, so I guess I mean the, the image of the diagonal here. Um, right. All right, so now we're ready to state this proposition. Uh, it says that for an algebraically closed field, so K is an algebraically closed field, um, we have a bijection between varieties over K Uh, our one-to-one -one correspondence with a separated uh, reduced schemes of finite type over K. Okay, and the separated and the finite type condition are both uh, relative to uh, this uh, field K. And, uh, and furthermore, endomorphisms of, of varieties uh, correspond exactly uh, to morphisms. Uh, of schemes over K. All right, so uh, the textbook says now that from now on, whenever we say a variety over K, we're going to mean a separated reduced scheme of finite type over K. Uh, all the previous results that we proved about varieties uh, will be valid, everything works. Um, uh, but we're just going to talk about it inside this new uh, larger category of schemes because um, uh, it has, still has all the same information. I, I think uh, in category theory, the thing you can say is that the, there's a fully faithful functor from the category of varieties into the category of schemes uh, that, that acts like this. Okay, and, and, it, and moreover, we can precisely identify uh, what the image is. All right, so for, for now on, for example, I'm going to say a n over uh, c is uh, isomorphic to a uh, uh, spec of c x1 through xn, right? Um, another thing to think about, I think uh, I mentioned earlier that there are uh, the correspondence between uh, morphisms of, of pre-varieties and morphisms of schemes was not a bijection. Uh, so uh, as an example of that, uh, let's take a map of phi from uh, maybe a, uh, a polynomial ring 
uh, and let's say this map is just by a uh, complex conjugation. of the coefficients, right? All right, so this is actually a, a ring isomorphism. So that means it's a, it's a isomorphism of schemes. Isomorphism of schemes. Uh, you know, A1, let's see. To itself, okay, uh, but it is uh, not a morphism over C, right? So remember, uh, in our definition of schemes over K, uh, it had to commute. It had to um, commute with our map here, so. Well, we have this picture here, uh, and this is corresponding to the picture uh, A1, A1 over spec C, over spec C. Okay, this the, this bottom map is just uh, equality, and uh, and this map here is just including the con this map here. Uh, well, both these maps here is just including the constants into the polynomial ring, um, sort of the, the obvious map there. Okay, and um, and this complex conjugation map phi here does not make this diagram commute, commute because uh, if you uh, if you start here and go up here and then um, and then conjugate, uh, you don't get the same things if you take equality and then uh, and then go up there. So so uh, phi uh, is not uh, a morphism over C, so it's a uh, not uh, a morphism of varieties. Okay, so technically it's a morphism of of schemes, but it's not a morphism of schemes over C, and so it's not going to correspond to a morphism of, of varieties. Okay, that's it for our chapter on schemes, and we'll continue on with uh, schemes of modules next time.